So everybody give it up to Paul. <laughs> Thank you, B, for that. What a great story. I feel like I'm at that part where there was that commercial maybe in the 70s and the guy said like the hair loss clinic for men and I'm all, he takes his wig off and it's like I'm also a client too. So, <laughs> so this is the chance where I get to tell you about Cecil, which you've heard a little bit about. But before we get to Cecil, you have to hear about Crumpet. So before Cecil, we had a Lhasa Apso that lived to 16, just about 16. And Crumpet was quite a personality. He had, I guess to sound like some of the other speakers, um, he had such a, such a big underbite. Uh, it was like the biggest underbite like west of the Mississippi, it was huge. <laughs> he would scare small children. And he was just an incredible uh, dog. And actually, I, I'm gonna have to tell the story, which I wasn't thinking of, but Babs in the back of the room. I used to walk him really early in the morning, and one morning, about 4.20 in the morning, I heard a woman screaming, like, 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 oh my God, what is it? And somebody had fallen and, had, and broke a hip. But it sounded like rape or something. It sounded really bad. So I hear him walking crumpet, and we actually heard her call the ambulance, and she's here with us today, thanks to um, Crumpy having to get up at four in the morning to go out pee. So that's sort of like, I wasn't planning on telling that story, but Babs is in the back, six weeks of recovery, and I got to know her afterward, and she would always say thank you to you, to, to me and uh, her little guardian angel, Crumpet. So Crumpet was really, really special, and it was very hard when we had to put him down last fall. And uh, uh, the hardest part, which I didn't realize at the time, is that while this is my third dog that I've had to put down, and it's never easy, you all know this, um, it was the first time that my husband had a dog. And when we had the vet come to the house and we did this, he's like bawling, crying. And he's an engineer, he never cries, right? <laughs> so I'm crying, he's crying, but he's crying like unbelievably so. And I was like, what? And then he tells me, like, this is my first dog. And I'm like, oh, shit, wow. And then he says to me, because the dog kind of clung to him more. And then he says to me, oh, I hope Crumpet knew, know, knew how much I loved him. I'm like, of course he does, you know? And he says, yeah, but he picked me over you. And yeah. <laughs> Great, yeah, thanks, okay. Cry some more. So. It was really, really hard for us to say goodbye. And then we started talking about like, maybe in the future we'd get another dog. And he'd say to me, what kind of dog? And we're not ready. But we were both online looking at dogs. And I said, I think I want like a medium sized dog. Because I've always had these small dogs before. And the last dog was a male. So I think I want a female dog. Maybe like a Labradoodle or a Golden Doodle. And so I'm like, OK. And then all of a sudden, I'm online. And then there's Cecil. <laughs> I mean, is this dog not frickin' adorable? <laughs> and I see his adoption picture, and I'm like, oh my god, like, must have dog now. Like, like Stephanie, like, this has to happen. So I call Arnello, Arnello over, and I'm like, look. And he's like, what? And I'm like, that's, that's our new dog. And he's like, but I thought you wanted a medium-sized dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought you wanted a female. I'm like, it's Cecil. <laughs> He's beautiful. So immediately I go online and complete the six-page double-spaced application. <laughs> All I can say is Pixie could be the role model for the state's foster care system. Do you know how thorough that form is? Thank God it's that way. But then even I was questioning myself because they even had some hypotheticals in there. What do you do to da, 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 the dog? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I, this is what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Maybe I've been doing it wrong. So anyway, <laughs> filled out that six-page application. Thank you, Pixie, for all that great screening. And then, like, the next day, they're like, yeah, go, go meet Cecil. And so I was like, oh, my God, like, what if he doesn't like us? And so we go to B's home, and it was just, like, this magical thing. 
And then we're like, okay, we're gonna do like a two week trial thing. And it's like, what if we're shitty parents? Like, what if we're not good parents? But we are, but like, I don't know, because I've never had this happen before. So anyway, we, we bring Cecil home and he was loving, a little distant at first. And we wanted to be really good parents. And so we have the king size bed, we have all the pixie approved literature, like have the kennel there, and we have the dog bed at the bottom. And I'm like, we're just gonna let Cecil decide where he wants to sleep tonight. So Cecil comes up and he's on the bed. And most of my experience with losses is there at the end of the bed. And he's kind of at knee level between us. And he starts to fall asleep, and I'm like, oh, it's great. And I'm a side sleeper. And a, during a deep sleep, I'm laying on one side. I feel this weird, wet, very, very, very wet sensation on my hand. And I don't open my eyes, but I kind of know what it is. And I want to, I have this urge like, oh, that's so gross. <laughs> Cecil is licking my hand. He is licking every inch of my fingers. And especially like that webby part in between, it kind of tickles and it's like, ooh. And it's very, very wet, very wet. And I'm laying there and I'm like, this is so gross. But I love him and, and he just was like, Arnell says he's like ministering to me. So like he's ministering to my hand and then I hear this little sigh and he falls asleep by my hand. And it's like, oh my God, like, I love this dog. And the other surprise for us is like, everything that I thought I knew about losses, Cecil does everything different. The two losses I've had before, when you throw something to play fetch, they're like, you get that yourself. I ain't picking that up. Cecil loves to play fetch. And B told me that. She's like, Cecil. He even gets the toy and throws it up in the air. I'm like, I don't believe that. He does. He loves playing fetch. So there's like that aspect of him. And then when we first got him, uh, we live in an older home, 1915, and it's not like OSHA approved, probably like the steps really, really high. And this dog is really tiny. So he couldn't go up the steps. So we'd have to carry him. So Arnell got these little treads through Amazon. We just glued them down. And we would watch him just like a puppy. He's figured that out. So he's got like, he's got complete like access to the home. Then what happens is I'm more like the stay at home dad. And then Arnell goes off to work every day. Cecil starts getting a little possessive. And so when Arnell would come close, he'd be like, <laughs> 12 pounds of I'm going to kick your ass, right? <laughs> So, but it got to be a problem, like, I, I don't know how to manage that behavior. And here's the thing about Pixie Project, which I now know and love. When Pixie Project says that they help find a forever home, they really mean a forever home. Do you know what I mean? And so, I called Pixie Project and said, I don't know what I don't know about this behavior. And they're like, oh, no problem. We'll call Denise, the behaviorist. <laughs> Denise has already worked with Cecil when Cecil was at Bees. And also, Denise worked with Cecil when he first came into the shelter. So Denise came in an afternoon with his little bag of treats. Boy, if I had just known it was that easy. <laughs> Lots of little treats, but it was the behavior modification and everything is so positive. And that one visit helped incredibly with the behavior. And every single night, I'm proud to say that Arnell trains him, but it's more like a game. And being an, a logical engineer, he has this little thing that goes out with a red ball on the end. Target, target, target. It's like, I'm living with the behavior. So like, Cecil's like, his confidence level has just grown so much. He's like, ah. But here's the other thing about Cecil. I don't know if we have a picture. Uh, well, actually, I like the one between the, the, the railing there. So. Cecil doesn't like to go for walks, especially when it's wet out, even when it's not. So you go outside and he'll just stare at you, kind of like the other dog when you want to go play fetch, just like, I don't know. He'll just, he just does not enjoy walking. So I had this idea one day. I said to Arnell, I think we should get him a baby stroller and see what happens. 
No. I don't want to be two guys with a baby stroller with a dog in it. So I went to my neighbor Molly's house. She's got a nine-year-old. And I said, I bet you have a stroller in your attic. And she said, yes, I do. Put Cecil in the stroller. And this dog is like happy. Very, very happy. I think it just kind of helps having his own little space around him. Take him to the park. He plays. He's awesome. But then this one up here says, that's kind of like tore up. Like that's old and dusty and it's, it's kind of ragged and it's been up in cobwebs and stuff. And I said, well, what do you think? He says, Cecil needs a new stroller. <laughs> okay. So Mr. Amazon Prime goes over there and does all the research that a good engineer does, how much the weight it holds, you can have a cup in the back, so you can be like a yuppie coffee drinker, side pockets. Cecil's got now like this zooped up SUV. He's up higher off the ground. This dog loves the stroller. Meanwhile, he's becoming a sensation on Facebook because um, he has his own Facebook account, Instagram. So he's like seen in the neighborhood. And so people who I know in the community, I do a lot of these shows, they say, oh my God, I saw Cecil on Facebook. So, so Cecil's starting to get known. So about two weeks ago, um, one of my friends who lives sort of like half a zip code away, she's in her SUV with her daughter, like the other SUV that most people have. And she says to her nine-year-old daughter, <laughs> She says, hey, Ruby, do you want to go see those two guys with a, with a dog and a baby stroller? And she's like, yes! So she does like this 360, she turns around, parks in front of us, and, the, and this little girl comes running out, Cecil, Cecil! And Susan's like, Cecil. And I'm trying to like have a conversation with Susan, who's like a colleague of mine, won't have it. It's all about Cecil. Take him out of the stroller. This dog is like, he's like a magnet for just love. People just love this dog. So um, I think we've kind of figured that out. Like we just take him on his daily stroll and he's super, super happy. Um, so I, I just want to um, say thank you to Pixie because um, I didn't, I, this is like my first adoption and I wanted to do it right in my first rescue. And um, I couldn't not have done this without the added support, sort of like the, the wraparound support after. You know, like, like B taking Cecil into her home and making that a best home for him, providing that safety net. And then like when I'm having problems, they don't just say, you know. They say, oh, let's get Denise in. The same behavior. Like, it's, it's just like they do so much to support the adoption. So I'm extremely grateful um, to Pixie. And I'm extremely grateful to Cecil because if I didn't get Cecil, we wouldn't have had this event tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you.